this is Doug Ward from Tech Britain. Today we're here with Simon from Rumble Labs. Thanks for your time, Simon. No problem. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Uh, just like to let our viewers know a little bit about your background, first of all. Okay. Um, I started off a long time ago in uh, engineering, refrigeration, about 15 years ago in my career. Um, moved into the enterprise IT, weirdly. Uh, partnered up with a friend of mine. We put a business together. Built it up quite well here in Northern Ireland. Um, I left there in about 2007, um, sorry 2009, um, and started Rumble Labs with Stephen Highlands, our creative director. Uh, with a view to just really getting a wee web design business together, I wanted to get out there and build cloud software rather than um, essentially putting servers in the cloud. Um, but uh, we, so we then merged with um, a guy called David Rice. We worked on a collaborative project in the circle together, um, which Matt, Matt Johnson runs. Um, and we decided we would just get together, pull our, pull our resources, um, swing over to Ruby. We were primarily PHP, but we figured going forward Ruby was going to be a better platform. And uh, that was us. That was, over here, that was over a year ago. We've been going about three years now. Um, nowadays we're not so much working on websites, more web-based applications. Um, and we've kind of got a bit of a reputation for being the guys to go to for that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we were at the uh, Belfast Ruby event, which you organised uh, yeah. the other night, which, yeah. was, which was fantastic. I yeah. highly recommend that. It was good, yeah. good crack and really... Uh, it, it, it's been a hard grab. Um, one of the reasons why we started that is because, <coughs> being a small company, um, we need more resource. We're getting a lot of startups coming to us wanting to build stuff. There's quite a lot of good grant aid coming from government um, in Northern Ireland. and. We were just struggling to get resource, we were maxed out, um, and there was no community really kicking off. It was tried a while ago, um, and just didn't really happen, so we pulled it together. First meetup, we got 80 people at it, uh, which was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and even even on, um, you know two days ago in the last meetup, which was based on test-driven development, it's a very dry subject, we still got what, 20, 25 people there, yeah. so it's been really good. You know, We've got a lot of interest. And Certainly, as far as we're concerned, we did get a recruit, you know, out of it. We, we've met people and we've employed people through it, so it's, um, awesome. it's worked really well for us. And I think other people, they're getting involved and helping us put it together, um, are starting to see real work through it as well. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps people who haven't been to a meetup before, what would you uh, recommend? We're doing this very uh, yeah. informally. You're alright. No, go ahead. Sorry, we're, never <laughs> we're nice and relaxed here in Tech Brain. Yeah. Um, perhaps people who haven't been to a meetup before, what yeah. kind of thing can they expect? Uh, beer, <laughs> pizza, usually, um, or uh, other other forms of snacks and drinks. Um, you, I mean, we try to get a couple of people talking, do a couple of short talks, you know, 15, 15, 20 minutes, and just a bit of crack. You know, you can get up and speak to like-minded people, talk about problems, you know, address any technical problems you've got. You know, you've got all the experts in the room. Um, we, we we do want to move that you know forward and have sort of smaller meetups, more like little hackathon events, you know, where we all are literally sitting hacking away. But a lot of the stuff that we're doing now is you know having talks to draw people in, to get people interested in it, um, and ideally start building stuff. You know, so there's been a few you know hack you know hack meetups um, down at Barcelona Labs and stuff like that that we've, that we've been involved in. Um, and it works really well, you know. It's just uh, having it having it focused on Ruby is just it's good for us, and um, people seem to like it, you know. So. Uh, people who are a little bit worried, you know, you come across people who are defensive, they're in stealth mode, all that kind of thing. Yeah. What would you say to? to it's uh, you have to stay paranoid at the end of the day. If you've got an idea that you're worried about, uh, that people are going to steal, then fair enough. But really, ideas are cheap. You know, and you're better off solving your problem. You know, talking to people, getting your problem solved, if, if you actually have one, and uh, just get on with it. You know, you're in stealth mode because you want to be first to market. If you're going to hold off, then you're not going to be first to market. So you're better off talking to people, getting stuff built. You know, we we sign NDAs every day, and they kind of mean, in my mind, they don't really mean very much. I sign them to keep the, you know, to keep people happy. Yeah. Um, but. You know, we're talking to so many people, and there's always a wee bit of crossover somewhere. Of course, you know. Um, I think people forget as well how busy other people are. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, so. yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. It's funny. I mean, a lot of the work that we do these days is with startups, um, and they they come from a varying range of people who have never started a business before, and they've maybe been you know in education or you know some other profession completely, you know, but uh, never actually run a business or never built software more to the point um, and getting them you know part of what we do is to understand you know, the business and help them nearly 
define what it is that they need to do to get the product out, you know. Uh, and, and some others come along with, you know, 50 page spec and you're going, oh, that's a bit too much. <laughs> you, know, you, you should wind that back, you know, get a, get a very, you know, get a lean product out there, get something done, get it out there quick and don't spend, you know, you shouldn't have spent that long writing a 50 page spec. Awesome. Um, so that's the kind of stuff you know that we that we have to do um, is literally piece piece things together. Usually, you know, if they're coming without a spec, we will help them write a spec. You know, define uh, define what it is that we need to build. You know. What's, what's your thoughts on uh, Belfast tech community? <coughs> I think it's. I mean, uh, I came from a different part of the tech community, if you like. You know, coming from enterprise IT, and it was all you had all your big incumbents, you know, you had HP and Dell and BT and all the big players. Um, and in that game, nobody talked to each other, really. I mean, you knew who each other were, was, but very little in terms of collaboration. Um, I find in the web game uh, and just in apps and stuff, people just tend to talk to each other now. You know, they will actually collaborate and partner on projects. And there's there's the tech community and there's also the design community as well, which plays well into it, you know, for on the creative side of things. And they're, they're, they're very closely related in our game. Do you want to go ahead? Um, so uh, that's kind of good, you know, because it, it lightens it off. You've got the creatives playing with uh, the techies, you know, and a lot of the techies, certainly in our game, you know, a lot of them think they're designers, <laughs> you know. But um, so uh, they're all very aware, at least, you know. And I guess it's it's a booming um, uh, it's a booming situation in Belfast at the minute, you know, where. Everybody that I know um, are trying to recruit and can't get people, and that's in design as well. You know, there's um, there's some good design companies out there in Belfast as well. You know, but what we find the biggest issue that we find is education not coming through. Um, so there's there's a course um, run at the University of Ulster called Interactive Multimedia Design, um, and it's a really good course to feed in for for web design. Um, they don't get too tacky, um, so it's not really a software course. But then you've got comp science, you know, the computer science students, and they're learning Java and other stuff because ultimately they're feeding into the large um, FDIs, you know, the, 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 the large companies, the large different investment companies like Allstate and Citigroup and people like that, and they're coming in and employing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, which you'll hear a lot of people moaning about that. But it's not a bad thing, mm -hmm. you know. They're 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 spending a fortune educating people, making programmers, and when those programmers get sick of working for those companies, they're coming to people like us. Yeah, you know. So it, it's not a bad thing, but um, unfortunately, education isn't aligned with where people actually want to be at the moment. Yeah. So perhaps, regards in terms of the government and their role to play in the tech community, you think perhaps they should be pushing just from the grassroots, the education standpoint. Absolutely, and always, you know, always. Um, they need to be doing that. They also, you know, and part, probably part of the problem is that um, the larger the larger companies can afford to actually feed back in the education, whereas, you know, we're all just a lot of small companies and we don't really have an awful lot of say. So we do, we do talk to the educators, you know, we go in and do guest lectures and we go in and do bits and pieces and G up the kids a bit, you know, but um, to actually influence change, uh, you know, in terms of curriculum and stuff like that, I think it's a, you know, it's a taller order. Um, I don't know how we're going to do that just yet. Perhaps if we all come together, That's things, like, things yeah. like Tech Britain. Totally, yeah. And, uh, no, we just have to keep making noise. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, in terms of like the recruitment standpoint, mm. is this just a common problem across across the industry? Trying to get um, it's global. Uh, we know, you know, we know lots of companies in San Francisco, so, you know, being the hotbed of you know web dev and you know apps and and, and investment culture. Um, they're totally maxed out. You can't get a resource over there at all, you know. And salaries are probably you know well well elevated beyond what we get. You know, yeah. in Northern Ireland we get the you know the tail end of the stick if you like. You know, it's it's like you know in terms of salaries. But again, that's what we're starting to try to do. Um, in the web game, because in enterprise software and even in enterprise IT, you know, you've got very, very high salaries and high daily rates. In the web, I found when I first got into it, the, the, the wages were, you know, the wages were very low. You know, senior guys weren't getting anywhere close, not even half of what some of the other guys were getting, and daily rates were low as well. But we've just found over the last couple of years, we've had to creep them up. Um, because we're having to pay more, we want to pay our staff more. We want, we want them to stay, you know, and. We want them to, to enjoy what they're doing, you know. Um, but it, that's that's I think probably one of the, the things starting to make a bit you know bit of an impact as salaries are creeping up. Certainly, as far as we're concerned, I don't know 
I'm sure others are, you know, doing the same. And it's hard because, you know, you're paying more money and maybe haven't increased your daily rent just yet. Um, but it's a common problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just the fact that, you know, this, it's, we seem to be laggards in that respect, you know, which is great if you're dealing with America because they pay you a good rate. Mm -hmm. um, but we're have, we're now you know, our rates are pretty much now competitive with you know somebody in the states as well, so mm -hmm. it's leveled out that way. But it's just it's a global resource problem, you know. They can't get guys over there. The likes of Living Social and all these are large Ruby houses. Mm -hmm. They're just buying up Ruby shops, so they are. You know, and a lot of the Ruby, um, a lot of the Ruby sem you know, seminars and, and um, conventions are all. That really all the all the all the ad, ad, advertisers are just saying we're hiring. You know, it's not come and see our great products. It's come and work for us. Yeah. You know, so it's <laughs> it's must it's it's wild. You know. Yeah. I've, I've got to ask with the uh, knuckle duster on the yeah. door there, on yeah. the front of the office. Yeah. It sets off quite a strong tone there. Where, where did that come from? Well, uh, we uh, beer mostly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like right, we got to come up with a name. <laughs> Let's get drunk. Um, but no, we, we figured that, uh, and again, just based on my, my past experience, when you're working with a client, um, it, it always turns into a bit of a rumble because they have an expectancy and you have to realign that expectancy nearly always. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's always a bit of tit for tat. Yeah. You know, and we, we tend to be quite strong with our customers in terms of keeping them right because we tend to know mostly what we're at. Mm -hmm. um, and we're maybe quite strong handed in that respect, you know. But we they well, like us for it. Yeah, you know, again, because we're keeping them right, you know, it's not yeah, everyone we spoke to in the area is big, big yeah. fans of Rumble Pops. So yeah, yeah. We're doing something. Hope so. Very, yeah, very yeah. right. Yeah. Well, that's been the case. But uh, no, it's good, yeah. That was yeah. In terms of uh, Belfast in terms of an incubator, I believe mm -hmm. you were involved with uh, one in the past. Do you like to let yeah. our views know about that? Yep, uh, it was actually just over there, there's a building over there. Um, it was put together by uh, Matt Johnson, uh, Marty Neal, uh, of our boss, and a, and a guy called David Kirk. Um, it was called Start Six uh, VI, so Start VI, virtual incubator, is quite clever. Um, and six months, six businesses for six months for 6% was the kind of idea, um, and we were like the beta of that. So we, we, uh, we, we applied to get in, we had um, our own product owner team. Um, for annotating web design concepts, and we, you know, brought that brought that to Matt. Had a chat with him. Says, "Yep, sounds great. Come in." And uh, we were put in there. It's an old, disused factory building, um, and it was beside a co-working space in there. And uh, it was great. It was dirty and dusty, and you know, barely had electricity. But um, they had a bit of a paint party and cleaned the place up. And it worked well. And we, we pretty much just, you know, we were in it for about the six months. Um, and unfortunately, the landlords. Landlord went the administration, um, KPMG came in and condemned the building. <laughs> so we were like, ah, oh, right. Um, so we had to get out. Yeah. Um, and I think you know the key the key aspect of that is I think Incubator does have to have a location. Mm -hmm. The idea was great. To be honest, at the time there wasn't the flow of startups coming through, so we were struggling to get applicants, and we were going to you know bring more in. We were going to stay you know stay involved and try to run through again and do another couple of rounds of it. Um, and I think that will happen again. You know, there's some applications in to pull another incubator together in Belfast, and you know, uh, as you know, Emer Emerald Valley down in Newry is doing it, and there's a few others popping up as well. So it'll happen again. Um, I think it was amazing. I think it's a great idea. I think it's absolutely needed. You know, even you know, at, at the at the very loose end of that, you know, just basic co-working um, in Belfast city centre would would be great because you just get all the heads in the room. You know. Um, and that's where the crack is. That's why people want to, you know. That's why I think maybe people want to come and work with us because we've just got lots of, you know, it's just good crack. Yeah. You know, we try to make it as fun as possible yeah, to yeah. work like, you know. And we're not, we're not assholes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna end the interview by saying that the, the Belfast Ruby event was just fantastic. Yeah. I highly recommend it to anybody yeah. who's watching this. Uh, yeah. You know the guys at Rumble Labs. Uh, you like you said, you have a good, great laugh. Yeah. When we're playing ping pong, beers, pizza. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's a proper good laugh, and uh, you shouldn't be intimidated by the by the name Rumble. Not at all. No. You know, anybody here? I'm, I'm a nice guy. You know, it's it's not like, I don't wear the duster. Okay. It's yeah. it's or anything like, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a good humour, and uh, you be in good hands coming down here. Yeah. So yeah. I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thank real, you. Real pleasure. Thanks for coming over. Cheers. Thank yeah. you.